first time in Video Awards history, from the ITV studios in Lakeland, Florida, join us for a special virtual edition of our show. Tonight, we honor our talented video editors, writers, and on-screen talent to exemplify creative excellence in video production and film. Through the use of 21st century skills, our 5,000 students and teachers bring their ideas to life, setting the standard by which all other television production programs are measured. Our show is made possible by generous donations from Safari Montage, Class Link, Lightspeed, Polk Education Foundation, Camcor, Smiley's Audiovisual, and Bomar's Trophy Shop. Welcome to the 28th Annual Polk County Public Schools Video Award. Now, without further ado, join us in recognizing our Student of the Year, Ms. Zoe Bovio from Alta Vista Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for short film. Lofman Oaks. Davenport School of the Arts. Dr. Annie Roberts. Churchwell. Bessard L. Holland. Crystal Lake. Southwest. Lena Vista. Congratulations to all our nominees. The ITV award goes to Lofman Oaks Elementary. This is Lofman Oaks' first win for short film. Jones ordered five cheese pizzas and one pepperoni pizza. What's the fraction of cheese pizzas she ordered? Work that out. Yes? Ms. Vickery needs to make copies to deliver to all the classrooms, so she asked if you could send three responsible students to help. Oh, okay. So maybe we can leave a trail of paper to lure them. Oh, like a trail of crumbs, but with paper. Well, that works. <laughs> Good thing Mr. Larsville has library today. Okay guys, I'll go to the 
Mrs. Beans. Well, you guys, just more to come back. Listen here, okay. Yes? Well, the printer, it's not working. What do you mean? Well, it sort of got jammed, and we tried to fix it, and paper just started going everywhere. But where are the other clones? We need to go find them fast. Yeah. Well, we should get out of here before Mr. Larson will come back. They're going everywhere. And I don't like the printer. So, um, it's just, it's not <laughs> the copier. Yeah, I kicked it. It wasn't working. How do you know? Yeah, that's happened before. Oh, are you going to lunch? Bring me back a cookie, please. Oh my gosh. Ow. But, but... Recognizing our student of the year, Mr. Landon Kent from Crystal Lake Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for Instructional Academic Video. Lena Vista. Carlton Palmer. Churchwell. Southwest. Crystal Lake. Bessard L. Holland. Medella. Dr. Annie Roberts. Lofman Oaks. Congratulations to all our nominees. The ITV award goes to Spessard L. Holland Elementary. This is Spessard L. Holland's first win for instructional academic video. Hi everyone, Professor Des is here. Actually, I'm Professor Des, E. Bell. That's what my mother named me. Ha ha ha! On today's episode of Math is Fun, we're gonna be learning about this. Can you guess what it is? Minerals! No way! 
unless you count slicing numbers in half a ninja move. Now that I think about it, it is a ninja move. We're gonna slice numbers up with our math ninja skills. So with my math ninja skills, I can teach you about fractions. Well, what is a fraction? A fraction can be described as the question, how many parts of a whole? This kind of whole? Hello! No, it's this kind of whole. As we look at a whole pizza, as we cut it up, we get fractions. All parts of this pizza, pizza. would be one whole pizza. But if we start to divide it up in slices, we start to get fractions, such as if we cut this pizza into four equal pieces. We would see this fraction written as four over four. Any number over itself always equals one, one whole. But if we start to take pieces away, we get fractions, such as three-fourths. That means we have three pieces remaining of the original four. Two-fourths. That means we have two pieces remaining of the original four. Hey, you old whippersnappers. Back in my day, we just called two-fourths, two-fourths. And somewhere along those lines, somebody figured out reducing. Reducing a fraction means breaking it down to the lowest it can go using its GCF. Now what does that mean again? Greenest colored flower? Greatest cup flowing? Greatest common factor! Oh, that's right. The greatest common factor is the greatest factor that divides two numbers. In our example of two-fourths, the greatest common factor is two because three can't go into two. So two divided by one is one and two divided by four is two. So two-fourths reduced would be one-half also. Now you know. Back to our example, if we took away one piece, we would now have one-fourth of the original four pieces. We can also refer to that as one-quarter. Why? Here's a dollar bill. If we divide this into four, we can use the four quarters. So one-quarter is the same as one-fourth, because it takes four quarters to equal one whole dollar. But what if we have more than four people to give pizza to, such as six? You could cut the piece into eight slices. That saved two pieces for you. How do I know? Take a look. One whole pizza. Eight slices, I give six people a slice. That'd be one eighth each. After passing out the six slices to six people, I would have two of the original eight pieces of a whole. That'd be two eighths for me. But wait, could you reduce this? Today's two vocabulary terms are numerator and denominator. Numerator is a number above the line in a fraction that indicates how many parts of the whole. Denominator is the number below the line in a fraction that is a divisor. Now it's time to build some math muscle. Let's see what happens when you have more than one fraction. How do you add and subtract fractions? It's really easy to add fractions if you have a a common, common denominator. denominator. All you do is keep the common denominator and add the numerators that are on top. Here's an example. You have three eighths and you want to add another two eighths. You keep the common denominator, eight, and you simply add the two numerators. So three plus two equals five. So the answer to this problem is five eighths. But what happens if you have denominators that are different? Such as one fourth plus one half. All you have to do is make it easy. Make it easy by making these have a common denominator. In this problem, the common denominator is four because four is a factor of four and two is a factor of four. For one fourth, we keep it the same. For one half, we multiply two times two to get the common denominator. So we have to times the numerator by two, also getting two. So now we have one fourth plus two fourths. And since the denominators are the same, we add the numerators. One plus two equals three. So our answer is? Three fourths. Great job, three fourths. According to my grade book here, you all get straight A's for being such smarty pants today. On the next episode of Math is Fun, I'm gonna teach you how to multiply these crazy things called fractions. I'm Professor Desi Bell, showing you how easy math can be. Recognizing our Student of the Year, Ms. Journey Glover from Sleepy Hill Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for documentary. Crystal Lake. 
Lofman Oaks, Southwest. Congratulations to all our nominees. The ITV award goes to Southwest Elementary. This is Southwest's second win for documentary. Imagine being tucked into bed for a long night's sleep without a care in the world. Dreaming about what new adventures you and your family would go on over the weekend. That's exactly what was on my mind when my dad rushed in and woke me up. Grayson! Grayson! What? I need you to follow me. Wake up right. Come on. Okay. Let's go. Okay. I got Grayson! What's happening, Dad? Don't you have the edge? What are you doing, Dad? Just get in the closet. What are we doing? Just get in the closet. Do we have flashlights? I'll get the flashlights, guys. Just get in the closet right now, please. Hurry up! My parents managed to get us to the closet, the safest place in the house. All of a sudden, everything went dark. A huge roaring sound was all around us. It sounded like a freight train was trying to wreck through our house. The trees were blowing. The sound of the wind and rain wrecking against our windows was nothing I had ever heard before. It sounded like our roof was getting ripped off. It was the scariest 10 minutes of my life. Tropical Storm Nestor was the 16th named storm of the 2019 Atlantic storm season. The storm was poorly organized, causing severe thunderstorms. At 10.57, a tornado warning was launched by Polk County. The tornado that hit my house ranged from an EF0 to an EF2. The EF scale determines how fast and how powerful the tornado is moving. For example, an EF1 tornado has a wind speed between an 86 and 110 miles per hour. An EF2 has a wind speed between 111 to 135 miles per hour. The tornado that hit us here in Polk County had a wind speed of up to 135 miles per hour. Winds at that speed can cause lots of damage. Here in Polk County, it ripped the roof off of Kathleen Middle School, flipped a semi-truck, and even let cows escape into my neighborhood. Thanks to the EMS, or Emergency Management System, my family and I managed to take shelter immediately because of my dad's phone and the TV, which were blaring with alarms. The next day, I talked with my neighbor, Dennis Nitschke, about his experience with the tornado that night. What was going through your mind when you heard the noises of the tornado? We knew it was coming. We were watching it on TV. Grabbed my wife's hand and said, we are going to the middle of the building where there are no windows, and we're just going to hunker down. So we went to the bathroom, and all of a sudden we heard, sounded like a distant jet plane. Then it got louder and louder and louder and louder. And what people say is it sounds like a freight train. And that's what it was. It just sounded like a freight train. Do you know what a Doppler effect is? When you're going away, and it, when it passed, you heard just the opposite. Right, exactly. It was a very interesting sound. And while all that was going on, we heard things banging against the house. My grill was turned over and something from the neighbor came through my screen on the lanai. So I heard things and I was really concerned how bad was the damage. I was frightened at the moment, but relieved after it was all over and nobody was hurt. Right, that's the most important thing. Yes, it so is. thank you, Dennis, so much for You got it. Put her there, today. bud. Okay. Thanks. Next time I'm going to interview you. Okay. okay. Next, I checked in with another neighbor, Ram Sidharam. He had an up-close encounter with the tornado that left some pretty significant damage to his house. The sliding glass door. The trees really going wild. And then I saw the wind swirling coming towards the house. Before I could get up off my chair, the window behind me shattered. The oh. glass. I, then I came into the room and I felt the old roof. All, I like The whole house was going up because it lifted part of the roof. Right. And then it was like a train coming towards us. And then the train hit. And then it went through and then came back and then hit the front of the house. That's when all the roof flew off, you know. So it was it was a it was an experience. Yeah, seemed dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> dangerous, but it was over in two minutes. Two minutes and forty seconds. That's the total time it lasted. But it looked like an eternity. When you came outside and saw the damage, what were you thinking? I saw my car. My car, which is parked over there, moved all the way over here. And then there was a big tree branch on top of the car. When your neighbors came and helped, just were you so grateful? 
Yeah. This is a great community. Right. In fact, I have to thank your dad. He was the first one who said, can I help you cut the tree? He said, yeah, sure. And then my next door, my neighbor, Mike and his wife, they joined in and they helped me cut the tree and a lot of cleanup, you know. So it's a, it's a, it felt great, you know. And when the cows came through, were you oh, just Oh, it, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was the best moment. It was all the tension from the tornado went away when we saw all the cows, you know. Even the cows wanted to see right, the yeah. damage, you know, it was fun, yeah. Okay, well, Ram, well, thank you so much oh, you're for very welcome, joining Jason. us in the room. Thank, thank you. you. Now that you know about the damage a small tornado can cause, ask yourself, are you prepared? Experiencing a natural disaster such as a tornado can be very traumatic. It is important that you and your family stay calm and react as quickly as you possibly can to ensure your safety. My parents were prepared thanks to the EMS, the Emergency Management System. EMS was sounding on our TV and our phones, warning us that a tornado was in the area and that we should take cover. Here are some things to think about. Number one, designate a safe and secure place in your homes with no windows, such as a closet or bathroom. A basement would be an excellent choice, but if you live in Florida, good luck finding one. Number two, once you get to your safe space, Cover your head and neck with a soft cushion or a mattress in case of falling debris. You may also want to keep an emergency kit in your safe space. In the event of a tornado or other natural disaster, it may take days for rescuers to find you. In that emergency kit, you should include a whistle to signal for help, canned food, bottled water, flashlights, batteries, medicines, and first aid supplies. Once the storm is passed and your parents confirm that it is okay to move around, you can begin cleanup. But be sure to avoid any broken power lines and fallen trees. And also, check on your neighbors and make sure they're okay. Well, I think that about covers it at home. But what happens if a tornado strikes at school? There is already a tornado plan at every school that ensures a student's safety. Let's take a look at some of our Southwest birds. They're working really hard, but a strong storm is moving into the area and they may have to take shelter at any minute. As soon as the tornado alarm sounds, students and teachers will move quickly but safely into their shelter locations. First, second, fourth, and fifth grade students will move into their building's interior hallways and duck and cover against the walls. Third grade students will shelter under their desk in the duck and cover position. Once the all clear is sounded, notice how calmly students reverse the process and return to their regular activities. At first, surviving a tornado seemed a bit like a nightmare. I mean, it was pretty scary. But after the days following Nestor's damage, I saw my neighbors come together in a way I've never seen before. I'll sleep well tonight knowing that my family has an emergency plan and supplies. And I know that my community and neighbors have my back. Recognizing our Student of the Year, Ms. Elizabeth Sterner from Spessard L. Holland Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for Technical Mastery. Lofman Oaks. Churchwell. Blake Academy. Southwest. Crystal Lake, Lena Vista, Brigham Academy. Congratulations to all our nominees. The ITV award goes to Churchwell Elementary. This is Churchwell's first win for technical mastery. Are we about to rip off Toy Story? A little.
Hey, hey, I've got something to tell you. What? We're plastic dinosaurs, right? Sure, yeah. Do you know what plastic is made of? No! I do. Plastic is made of oil. So? So do you know what this means? I'm not sure I care. Let's travel back in time. I don't want to. Is it going to start anytime soon? Yeah, it's getting dark in here. Anyway, millions and millions of years ago, we ruled the Earth. Yep. And then we died. Woo! We decomposed, and over millions and millions of years, heat and pressure smooshed our bodies into a liquid. Oil? Yep, oil. And then humans came along and slurped it up using machines. And? That oil is refined and made into gasoline and other things, including plastic. Ah! So plastic is made of oil. Which means... Plastic dinosaurs are made of real dinosaurs? Cool! I know, right? They left us out again. I can't believe it. Recognizing our student of the year, Ms. Prudence Cheryl from Carlton Palmore Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for announcing team. Alta Vista. Sleepy Hill, Sykes, Lofman Oaks, Southwest, Mina Vista, Davenport School of the Arts. Churchwell, Philip O'Brien, Dr. N. E. Roberts, Crystal Lake, Carlton Palmer. Congratulations to all of our nominees. The ITV award goes to Lofman Oaks. This is Lofman Oaks' fourth win for announcing team. Good morning, Alice. Today is Friday, December 20th. And we are live from the gingerbread shop. Did you know that Santa travels all around the world in just one night? Isabella did some traveling too. Let's find out where she went. There's so many cool toys here at the gingerbread shop. I don't know whether to pick this or this. I love the gingerbread shop, but that isn't the only amazing thing happening here at the Oaks. You're right. Our red shirt winners are pretty amazing too. We elves have been working at Santa's workshop for hundreds of years. Ever since I was a little girl, I knew I wanted to make toys and spread some cheer. You know who else likes to spread a little cheer? Our K-Kids. Emily, what are you doing? I'm conducting an experiment to see which hot chocolate I like the best. That's not an actual experiment. I know, I know. For an actual experiment, you need all those variables. Recognizing our student of the year, Mr. Caleb Anthony from Blake Academy. Let's meet our nominees for female announcer. Spessard L. Holland. Lena Vista. Sykes, Lofman Oaks, 
southwest. Alta Vista. Crystal Lake. Brigham Academy. Blake Academy. Philip O'Brien. Carlton Palmore. Dr. N. E. Roberts. Davenport School of the Arts. Sleepy Hill. Churchwell. Congratulations to all of our nominees. The ITV award goes to Spessard L. Holland. This is Spessard L. Holland's first win for female announcer. It's always nice to help out your community, and here in Polk County, there are a lot of ways to do that, like volunteer at a soup kitchen or pick up trash at a local park. But there's one way that you can truly make a difference. That being the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club was first originated in 1860, but the three people who first founded it in 1860 were Elizabeth Hammersley, Alice Goodwin, and Mary Goodwin. This comes to show how amazing helping out your community can be, and it's amazing how something so small can become something so big, just like the Boys and Girls Club. Some of us will be getting ready to take the FSA, but for some of us it might be a little stressful, but thankfully I'm here to reassure you on how to get ready for the FSA. Also, the day before the FSA, tell yourself reassuring things, because you don't want to come into that big old test thinking, oh, I'm not going to get this, I'm going to fail, because it's never good for your brain. And studies show the biggest thing that caused... Recognizing our Students of the Year, Ms. Alyssa Craig from Brigham Academy and Ms. Jada Lynn Quiones from Medela Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for male announcer. Crystal Lake. Sykes. Southwest. Davenport School of the Arts. Lena Vista. Alta Vista. Sleepy Hill. Lofman Oaks. Cumby. Brigham Academy. Carlton Palmore. Spessard L. Holland. Dr. N. E. Roberts. Congratulations to all our nominees. The ITV award goes to Lofman Oaks. This is Lofman Oaks' third win for male announcer. I'm Roberto, and today on 60 Second Science, we're learning about snow. Here in Florida, it doesn't snow, so what exactly is it? Snow is a precipitation in the form of ice crystals. It starts in clouds when the temperature is below freezing. That's 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Brr. When it's that cold, the water vapor in the atmosphere condenses directly into ice without becoming a liquid first, then falls to the ground as snow. So how can we build a snowman or see what snow feels like here in Florida? We can make snow cones. All you need is a snow cone maker, a bowl of ice, flavoring, and a spoon. This part's kind of fun too. All you do is shave the ice cubes into a bowl of snow. Once it's snow, you can make mini snowballs. Recognizing our students of the year, Ms. Olivia Friel from Churchwell Elementary and Ms. Ava Legacy from Sykes Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for music video. Spessard L. Holland. Alta Vista. 
Crystal Lake, Dr. Annie Roberts, Lena Vista, Lofman Oaks, Churchwell, Southwest. Congratulations to all our nominees. The ITV award goes to Spessard L. Holland. This is Spessard L. Holland's second win for music video. Recognizing our Students of the Year, Ms. Zoe Holborn from Davenport School of the Arts and Ms. Kaylee Adams from Philip O'Brien Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for commercial. Southwest. Sleepy Hill. Garner. Brigham Academy. Davenport School of the Arts. Crystal Lake. Churchwell. Caldwell. Carlton Palmore. Spessard L. Holland. Lena Vista, Blake Academy, Dr. N. E. Roberts, Lofman Oaks, Lincoln Avenue Academy, Medulla. Congratulations to all our nominees. The ITV award goes to Davenport School of the Arts. This is Davenport School of the Arts' third win for commercial. this year really special for your kids? How about purchasing a yearbook dedication? Or maybe even purchase a yearbook to go under the tree? Just go to Balafour.com and find Devonport School of the Arts. Recognizing our Students of the Year, Ms. Sophia Navarro from Dr. Annie Roberts Elementary and Ms. Magdalena 
Mesidor from Lena Vista Elementary. Let's meet our nominees for news show. Dr. N. E. Roberts. Davenport School of the Arts. Sleepy Hill. Carlton Palmer. Churchwell. Blake Academy. Alta Vista. Brigham Academy. Laughlin Oaks. Sykes. Garner. Lena Vista. Southwest. Spessard L. Holland. Caldwell. Crystal Lake. Congratulations to all our nominees. Now let's see who our excellent news shows are. Caldwell, Churchwell, Crystal Lake, Davenport School of the Arts, Garner, Sykes. Congratulations. Now let's see who our superior news shows are. Lofman Oaks, Dr. N. E. Roberts, Southwest, Spessard L. Holland. Congratulations to all of our schools for the amazing news shows this year. As we all know, it takes a great deal of hard work and dedication to get a television production program off the ground. That's why we created the Michael Robertson Most Improved Award. This year, the award goes to Churchwell Elementary. Congratulations! Our most distinguished honor of the evening, named after the creator of video awards, is the Dr. David Yates Best in Show Award. Let's meet our finalists and winner for Best in Show. Our winner is Lofman Oaks Elementary. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the first ever virtual video awards ceremony. We will see you next year in person at the 29th Annual Video Awards.